Hello and good morning to my first session about Team Developer. So today we want to cover a lot of things about Team Developer, looking into different areas of Team Developer. And during my first session, I want to look into the resizing, zooming, in 4K monitors and more features inside the Team Developer 7.4 product line. So my agenda for today is I want to give you an overview about resizing enhancements like uh, new attributes in Attribute Inspector. I want to give you some information about API functions. We want to look into the zooming feature of team developer applications so that you can change uh, the size of dialogues by using the zoom function. And we want to look into the 4K monitor setting inside the build settings. I collected all these API functions and all the attributes into one application so we can use this application to explain what can be done inside your application, how you can code different things inside your application to make it more responsible for users, for, uh, for example, for end users, to resize, to show more information, um, to play around with different settings, zoomings, and so on inside one application. And you can use this application to get some ideas how to implement this application or how implement these features inside your application, inside uh, your existing application without changing so many things. I know from a few customers, they are still using resizing and they do it with uh, some API calls from external libraries or they build their own libraries. So resizing enhancements in Team Developer, we got a lot of feedback last uh, month about um, resizing, anchoring, data anchoring, data field anchoring, and so on inside the applications. And we found out that we have some missing features and therefore they cannot re replace the existing technology. And we looked into that and we found out that it makes sense to have an API and also to extend this existing uh, resizing possibilities inside Team Developer with some uh, useful features. Also, control anchoring is now available for .NET application. So if you're using a Team Developer with a, comp uh, with a .NET compiler, <clears throat> You can directly uh, use also the resizing uh, API, the attributes, and so on in .NET applications. We implemented also anchoring in the toolbars. Anchoring is now allowed uh, in, tool, in tab bars that have a tile to parent attribute set to yes, so it's also resizable. And we add some new attributes in the attribute inspector for anchoring maximum width and maximum height also for, for the minimum and maximum uh, height for the different child controls. Uh, this is also only available if anchoring enabled is set to true. So we found out, for example, that you can um, resize a dialogue maybe to zero, and that doesn't make any sense. Also, we have found out that you can use maybe the whole screen for a dialogue with only two or three data fields. And so we implement a maximum height and maximum width so that you can use these limitations inside your application. And you can override this. For example, uh, if you have scroll bars added, so if you resize something, then maybe you will see scroll bars. But you don't want to see the scroll bars, so you can, you can switch them off. And there are different ways to switch them off. The first one is uh, inside an API to switch them off. And then uh, the minimum size and the original size of the dialogues, of the forms, of the labels and data fields and so on is really as designed. So you cannot see any um, yeah, uh, scroll bars inside your applications. And of course, API function to set get anchoring attributes during runtime. We want to step into that uh, step by step. I want to give you an overview how to code them and what's uh, inside this uh, new API. And later on, we want to see them live in the code. Let's start with resize attributes. For the container windows, like a dialog, like a form window, we have now new attributes like um, the anchor maximum width. So at this point, if you look on the right-hand side, on the top, you will see we have a minimum width, we have a minimum height, and we have an anchor maximum width and an uh, anchor maximum height. So in this range, we can resize our container windows. For the child windows, we have a minimum width, 
and uh, you can decide, okay, it doesn't make sense to have only one character displayed, so at least the minimum width um, can be set uh, to maybe uh, two inches or the minimum height can be set to 0 0.25 inches. Let's have a look into the next uh, API function. Uh, first of all, we have to find out for maybe for a form, for a uh, form toolbar, for a dialog box, tab bar, navigation bar, if anchoring is really enabled. So we can uh, query that by using cell anchor is enabled for a special form window, for a form bar, um, form toolbar, dialog box, tab bar, navigation bar. So this handle can be passed into this uh, function and we get back uh, a Boolean variable which uh, gives a true anchoring is enabled or false if anchoring is disabled. So if it is enabled, then we can use additional API function maybe to enable the proportional resizing or different other um, functions of the anchoring tool set. Resizing API for the uh, cell anchors uh, get, we can query for a special control like a grid in my sample on the right hand side, uh, how the anchoring is set. Like we get back uh, return values, like um, for the anchoring horizontal and the vertical values, like zero is for left, one for right, two for both, and three for none for the predefined anchoring settings from the attribute inspector. Also for the vertical information like top, bottom, both and none. So we can uh, check if, for example, this grid is anchored to the left and to maybe both in the uh, vertical direction. We get also the information back if this uh, property is set, the anchoring is set for this grid control. It doesn't make any sense to try to set something uh, like proportional and so on a proportional view inside the grid if the uh, anchoring is not set. So at this point, uh, it helps you uh, if there's zero inside, then it doesn't make any sense to uh, switch on the proportional settings. But at least uh, if uh, something is set, then we get everything right in the right direction. If you look into resizing APIs, we can init the scaling for different controls. The scaling you will see later on uh, in the past, we had only the possibility to change the size, for example, the width of a text control and um, with a new the scaling factor, then we have, for example, a proportional scaling inside, let's say a dialog. If we have, for example, different values with different labels in one row, then we can switch on uh, with the background taxes like in uh, the last six rows with a different data fields and we switch it on into the horizontal and the vertical direction, then we will see that we don't have an overlap uh, of different controls so we can avoid overlap so we can also uh, use uh, uh, the space inside the dialog much better and this helps you to have really a smooth resizing of your dialogs. Inside um, the API settings, we have also a new table flag. That means the table flag called size proportional gives us the possibility to have proportional sized columns inside a grid. This looks a little bit, uh, I don't want to say strange. Normally, maybe you have uh, columns like um, ID, it's only a, a, a very small um, sized uh, column and maybe you have a, a company name and you need more space, you want to show more and so on. So we have different width of different columns, but if you switch on the color uh, size proportional flag for true or for false, then you will see we can show all the columns proportional inside a grid. So you can see all the columns. And uh, at this point, you can use again, resizing to show more, to show less inside the different columns and you get all the information also inside the tooltip. So if you have not set a direct tooltip and you see only parts of maybe of a company name, you can use the tooltip and you can move the tooltip on this field and you can see all this information inside uh, this um, special cell inside the grid. Cell anchor enable. 
means you can enable a, a, the anchoring for forms, dialog, tab bar, toolbar, or a nav bar inside your application. But you have to call this function as the same create of the parent form. You cannot do it uh, maybe uh, after um, uh, rendering the and showing the whole dialogue or the form and then switch it on. It doesn't work at this point. So before we start uh, displaying something at the create event, you have to set it. That means style anchor enable for a special form or you have to query if there is a tab bar in, then you can set, for example, the anchor and enabled for the special uh, tab bar inside this dialogue. And of course, you can query as anchoring is enabled. Like uh, a special form, you have to uh, find out, maybe you cannot see and you have no idea if there's uh, really a resizing enabled, then maybe it is uh, something um, you want to try to resize something, it doesn't work and so on. So you can uh, query at startup of the application, maybe of the form, if anchoring is enabled for a special control of special top level window like the form one. So if enabled is true, then show something, the um, anchoring is enabled for a special form. Also, if you get a false back, then it is disabled and you don't have to maybe uh, run additional code uh, to set something. So you can skip this code during startup time, which gives you a better performance. So I'll anchor set scroll bars enabled this is something um, what should be done at some application startup. So for example, I mentioned it before, you can switch off uh, the uh, toolbars uh, and um, you can, sorry, the, the uh, scroll bars inside the dialog, inside your forms. Normally, you, if you have set a minimum width and a maximum width, a minimum height and maximum height of a special form or dialog, then the scrolling will stop at a special point which is defined during um, the settings, during development time or during the design time. At this point, it is possible to say, okay, uh, I want, don't want to see the scroll bars enabled. At this point, we have all the, the minimum set and the maximum set, and you can redesign your size uh, really at runtime. But if you want to enable the scroll bars, then the minimum is set to the original size of the controls, and then you get a scroll bar. And the, the, all the uh, settings are not really um, yeah, in focus. That means that the minimum size is not valid, no longer valid. So you will shrink it maybe again to zero or maybe to one line inside a grid. And uh, then you will see a scroll bar on the right hand side. But normally, you want to switch it, them off. That means you want to set the scroll bars. You want, don't want to see the scroll bars because you want to see the whole dial. You want to see the whole form inside your application. But again, we can play around later on with my sample application, and we will see how that works. And of course, you can query so anchor gets scroll bars enabled if they are really enabled or not. So again, it, sometimes it makes sense to say, okay, I don't have set uh, this, um, yeah, the settings inside the attribute inspector. Then I want to uh, query if the scroll bars are enabled. If yes, then you will see scroll bars. If not, you don't want to see scroll bars. Let's have a look into our Zoom functions inside uh, our application in, inside Team Developer. So the zoom windows gives you the possibility to zoom uh, windows, to zoom the whole application like um, a special factor. Um, we have the possibility to set the, the scaling factor from 100 to 400. So you will see that later on in my application, in my sample, uh, 400 is really massive. And uh, normally you want to do something maybe between 100 and 150. You cannot choose a smaller values than 100. So 100 is really one to one as designed. And uh, the maximum scaling factor is 400. So you have to use, you can use any range between 100 and 400. 
but it gives you, for example, the possibility of a large screen. You don't want to use uh, the focal K monitor factors and so on, but maybe you want to resize all the applications uh, in a small way. You can use maybe one or twenty-five, uh, yeah, percent of your uh, original size, and you get a large application that looks like different. And of course, you can mix it also with all these attributes for the uh, scaling and for um, the resizing inside your dialogues, inside your forms, inside your application. Here's a small screenshot how it looks like. Um, at the right hand side, you see the original size of the application is 100%. On the right, on the left-hand side, you will see the factor by, by uh, one or fifty percent. But make sure that you use the, use the right font. Uh, if you have a very old font and a very old application, and maybe you m migrate this application from one five uh, to seven point four, then maybe you have to replace and um, the the font because the font does not support this uh, really the f um, yeah the, the different sizes of the different um, yeah levels of the zoom factors. Let's have a look into the 4K monitors. So we know from a few customers and we got a lot of feedback from our audience and from our team developer friends how to use 4K monitors. And now we have a new setting inside the build uh, environment, meaning that you can use uh, the DPI awareness inside your build settings. So you can disable DPI awareness by using the system or keep backward capabilities uh, with pre-team developer 7 releases. That means you have to switch on com uh, compatible, but default, I guess it is default, is application. That means um, at this point, the application is compiled um, into the 4K mode. That means if you are using 4K monitors, then you will uh, use normally the DPI awareness uh, application. That means the application takes care about the DPI settings of your monitor. And at this point, you uh, you don't have to change uh, something inside your environment. You don't have to sense to change something inside the settings of a special screen. So now we are uh, ready for a demo. I want to share my screen, and then I can go into share my screen. Let's go into my application. And this application has several screens. I want to show you several uh, settings. We can look into our DPI uh, settings, like uh, we have a minimum width and vertical anchor and uh, for a special control. If you look into uh, the dialogues of the attribute inspector, let me move it over here. You will see also the uh, uh, anchoring for the maximum width is always default, so we don't set something. If you want to set it, you have to do it really by hand. That means, uh, for example, I can set it uh, the maximum width maybe to 12 inches. So this is, can be done for all, uh, yeah, for all dialogues and forms. If we look into the scaling factors, um, sets the scaling. If you click on this, you will see we have a little bit code inside. That means we set the scaling. We initialize the scaling for different controls, like for the data fields, like for the grids, the different grids. And also on the second button, we switch them off, so that we have different possibilities. If we look into the application startup, you will see inside the action section that we have the scroll bus enabled set to false. That means we can use only the limits, the minimum width, uh, we cannot shrink it to zero uh, in size. And also we have a, a dialogue to show something proportional. That means, for example, the center of the window fills the grid. And we have inside the child window, we have a nice function to set the table flag. First at all, we query the table flag. If this flag is set to true, uh, the new flag, then we set it to false. And if it was false, then we set it to true to see the differences between the behavior between the flag call size proportional uh, inside the squid. Let's run this application. And we don't change something. And here we go. 
this is nothing uh, very special. We have really predefined um, information inside the grid only to show what can be done. Uh, we can use first as at all the zoom factors. So we do a 200, 120% zoom. <clears throat> we have a 150% zoom. And my favorite function is we need new glasses. <clears throat> but we go back. Um, so this is pretty simple to implement. It's only set zoom and um, pass in the variable. For now, uh, the first parameter is the form name or the dialog name, but uh, we support for now this ignored, so we use the whole application is now zoomed, not only this dialog, not only this form window. Let's switch on the scaling, and you can see the difference between the older version, let's say 7.3 team developer, and uh, the yeah, current version 7.4. So at this point, you will see, I put it up, and you will see the limit is reached, so no more space than 10. Oops, here's my application back. So at this point, also in this direction, we have different settings. So this is now uh, the scaling is set to proportional. We switch it off and you will see this is the old way. So we have overlapping information. We have overlapping uh, labels and we have overlapping um, yeah, grids and so on. So the set scaling is really a good choice to play around with. Um, I start it again because during... Here we go. So at this point, we switch it on again, and the limit is set. I switch off the limit inside the attribute inspector for the form. <clears throat> to default, run it again. Set the scaling. And now you can see no limit set for this dialog. I can show more or less. Also, what I did in this application, I have anchoring enabled. I can query it. It's true. So at this point, I can set all these uh, nice features like um, column resizing and so on. Scroll bus enabled is false, set to false inside the application startup event. Anchoring enabled uh, and anchoring values for a special grid, like this grid number two. Anchoring is enabled for top and for the vertical is none. So if we look into the proportional for the grid, you can see we have some hidden columns and so on. And if we resize something, maybe we see more, we see less. What we can do, we can switch on the proportional column set that means we see all the columns and we have now every column of the right uh, of the column size. And if you look into the tooltips, we get all this information on the tooltip. So maybe it helps you to show more information inside the grid, but maybe it is uh, cut and you get the tooltip with all the missing information. And of course, if you want to show more with resizing, you can do it in both directions. You can show more columns or you can show more data, more data rows inside this. And if you switch it off again, we have really the maximum size of the columns, the predefined and predefined sizes of the columns. And maybe you, this is a nice option for your users to have really all the columns uh, displayed and maybe they, is good enough to show the tooltips inside the application, inside the running application. A quick look into our uh, create. We have so a query if this is enabled, so we can find out the anchoring is, is enabled for this um, form. We can look into the anchoring disabled. We get the information about the grid. I showed it on the right-hand side. So anchor horizontal, if it's zero, then we have a left anchoring. It is one, it's right, and so on. 
we can use anchoring enabled again for the form window then also we can query uh, if the anchoring is enabled for a special form yes it is enabled the scroll bars can be checked if they are enabled or not let's do a nice test what we can do we go over here and we don't need to do the scaling for that one and for the data field one see the difference so enable scaling I'm talking about this data field and this marked so there's no resizing in there's no um, dynamic resizing in and what you can do is also to bring it align with this one and to say okay this is not really enabled I don't want to change the settings so if you see the difference again I do something like that bring it back to see the difference do it again switch it on yeah the label is still in but this um, yeah grid or this uh, data field is now resized so we can see more information in this one and of course what you can do is you can switch on the standard stuff so you don't need the API you can say I want to enable um, the anchoring into the both direction vertical anchor is bottom and both that means um, we want to have vertical into both directions and this field is anchored to the bottom of this dialogue so it's sometimes it makes sense also to say okay some informations like these fields should always be anchored to the bottom Okay. Let's go back. Do you have any questions so far about anchoring, about, um, yeah, others like zooming and so on inside your application? Yes, Helmut, there are quite a few questions that have come in during the webinar. I think you have answered a few of them already during the talk, but let's go through them. So okay. does the, the first one is, um, does the proportional scaling of columns only work in grids or in child tables? I must you can admit, use it I also in tables. It's okay. also in tables. Mm -hmm. Oh, very good. Very good. Um, another one that is probably more for me, at, as Internet Explorer is will be phased out and Edge will be the default, we need the quick HTML component to be upgraded to a working HTML viewer so we can still use to display web pages in TD. Is this planned? Yes, this is planned for TD 7.5 um, in um, November this year. Um, and a, another question here is, which functions function do I have to disable scroll bars in a window at runtime? And I think that's one you did answer during your presentation. I'm not totally yes. Sure. So you can switch off um, scroll bars at the start up of the application. At this point, you will no, never see scroll bars in any form or dialogue. Okay, cool. And then another um, question regarding the um, <clears throat> planned um, browser control. So will that be available for 32 and 64 bit versions? Yes, of course. Um, will be available for both. And then there's another one um, for you, Helmut. Oh, no, actually, that is for me probably as well. Does the data protection audit work only for the whole database, or am I able to exclude some tables? Um, currently, it only works for the entire database, so you cannot exclude tables. You can only define the amount of data that you um, that you audit, like I showed you in the several, several zero to four levels that you can turn on and how much data gets stored. But um, that's an idea that we could look into for the future, of course. Let me see if there's anything else. Uh, 
Um, there's one more question for you, Helmut. Is there a possibility to split a form window in different sections using a splitter window and anchor controls to the border of the section? Well, that's a good question. I cannot answer this quite yet. I have to test it. I want to test it first. Yeah. So that we need to come back to you. And yeah. then um, there's another question, which fonts work probably with Zooming? And I think I can answer that, you know, all the, um, what's the name of the Windows fonts that scale is um, TrueType, right? Right, it's TrueType fonts. So if you have, you need to use true type fonts for skating to work well. And we also, I think we we, we change the template of the TD um, starter application when you start programming. You know, the empty application has been changed to a true type font. But if you're using old applications um, that have been developed, you know, without true type fonts, then you need to change to true true type fonts in your controls. Yeah, I mentioned it before. So old versions maybe you have to change the, the font to true type fonts. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that was the questions that have come in so far. Thank you very okay. much, Helmut. And the next okay. session will be at um, 11.50 on uh, user interface enhancements. I'll put on the timer slide now for you, and we we'll see you in a few minutes.